Welcome to this lesson on iterative methods for root finding. In this lesson, we're going to focus on the bisection method. So when we say root finding, we mean solving the equation f of x equals 0 for x. And that might seem really restrictive to you, uh, so I just want to point out that you could have any equation, g of x equals c, some non-zero number potentially on the right-hand side, and you can rearrange that to write g of x minus c equals 0, and then you can think of this as being your f of x, okay? So this is really for finding when a function is equal to uh, any number, but we take the zero case without loss of generality, and it's this version, this form, that um, all the algorithms expect um, as, as the sort of input, as the problem that you're trying to solve. So we're going to talk about the bisection method, and the bisection method is based on the intermediate value theorem from calculus. And the technical statement is written down here on the slide, but all the theorem says is that if you have a function that's negative on one side of an interval and positive on the other, so for instance, negative here and positive here, um, you can't get from negative to positive without passing through zero, assuming the function is continuous. And if you pass through zero, that means there's a root here at r, okay? And what the bisection method does, like many root-finding algorithms, is it generates a sequence of approximations that we hope converges to this root. Let me say a few words about why root-finding is important. There are so many reasons, and I'm just going to mention a few here. Uh, one is optimization. So you might remember from calculus that sometimes when you optimize, you're setting a derivative or a gradient equal to zero. Right? And for hard problems, you can't do that by hand. You might need a computer to find where a gradient equals zero and to find the optimum of your system. Uh, other examples come from sort of the engineering world of signals and systems. Um, sometimes you might want to remove undesirable frequencies from an audio clip. It turns out that you need to solve a root finding problem to do that. Uh, and also control systems, right? Like the way your thermostat tries to keep your house at a certain temperature or the way uh, an airplane tries to keep its flight stable and so forth, those uh, control systems uh, also involve root finding. Cryptography and coding theory involve root finding problems. And finally, um, in lots of applications, we're concerned about fixed points. That's finding um, a point such that when you plug it into a function, you get the same value out. Um, and that comes up in economics and especially game theory and in dynamical systems and other fields as well. Now, before we introduce the bisection method, um, I want to talk about how we evaluate and how we think about different solution methods. One thing we care about is convergence. In other words, as we generate this sequence of approximations, does it start tending towards an actual root? And then if it does, how fast does it converge? And then how stable is the solution process to tiny numerical errors? And it might be hard to appreciate that issue in this little screencast right now, um, but uh, in future screencasts, we'll talk about that issue some more. Um, and it's not like there's one method of root finding or anything else that's always the ideal method. It might change from instance to instance. And just as a, a few examples, there can be a trade-off between the speed of convergence and the robustness of the algorithm, like how sure are you that the algorithm is going to succeed? Um, and there are different problem variants, right? And that can affect what's your preferred solution method. And some of these problem variants include if you have or need to have a reliable bracket around the root, like if you need to know my root is between these two particular numbers, um, also, if you have any a priori knowledge about the function whose root you're trying to find, is it continuously differentiable? Is it a polynomial? Does it have a single root? And so on. And on that note, um, whether we're interested in just any root, a single root, um, or if there are multiple roots, all of these different issues right, can affect what we think of as being the ideal algorithm. Let's say a few things about error and convergence. First, I'll just point out um, that after i steps of the algorithm, uh, you have i plus 2 function evaluations, and the 2 is because you start out by evaluating f of a and f of b, and then on every iteration, each of the ith iterations, you evaluate f of c. Um, and then we can talk about the solution error. And the error, e sub i, just means the magnitude of the difference between the actual root and the current value uh, of your approximation. 
Now, of course, if we knew what the error was, that would mean we knew what the actual root was, and we wouldn't have to do root finding in the first place. So what's more common is to talk about an error bound, right? That's kind of saying, like, we know the error must be less than or equal to a certain amount. We know it can't exceed a certain amount. And if you want to see what that amount is, like, think of on the zeroth iteration, right, where you have A and B, and we can think of this C in the middle as being an approximation. Um, and the worst you can do is if the real root were at, R, or were at A or at B. And then your error in either case would be half the width of the interval. Half the width of the interval is just B minus A over 2 to the uh, 0 plus 1, right? B minus A over 2. That's where uh, this expression comes from. And you should be able to convince yourself that at every subsequent iteration, um, the error bound cuts in half. Um, so that's, that's really um, kind of a fundamental result to know about the bisection method. Uh, is that error bound. Um, and then we can talk about convergence. And what convergence looks at is it looks at the i plus first error or, or error bound and divides by the ith error bound raised to some power q in the limit as i goes to infinity. And if that equals c, where I should say c is a non-zero constant, um, then what that means is that the convergence rate is equal to q. We have special um, uh, vocabulary for certain cases. If Q happens to equal 1, we say linear convergence. If Q is greater than 1, it's called superlinear. And if Q equals 2, it's called quadratic. Um, it turns out that for the bisection method, um, the convergence rate is linear. Um, this is something I may ask you to show yourself later on. But what you would do is just use the error bound and um, try to plug it into this definition and take a limit. And if you take Q equals 1, you'll get out a non-zero constant. If you take Q uh, bigger than 1, uh, you're going to get 0. And if you take Q smaller than 1, you're not going to get a constant. So there's just one value of Q um, that lets you get out a non-zero constant, and that's called the convergence rate. Um, another way of rearranging this expression to think about convergence is it says that the I plus first error is just some constant times the ith error raised to the q power. OK, so in summary of the bisection method, here's how I think about it. Um, it always converges, right? You're just bracketing in on a root. So if there is a root in the given interval, it, it will converge to a root. And the error approximately cuts in half each step. Or we can say the error bound does cut in half each step. Some cons of this method um, are that it only uses the signs of the function values, um, not the actual function values themselves or any other properties of the function. So it's like you're throwing away a lot of information. And um, perhaps because you're throwing away a lot of information, you don't get as fast convergence as you might with some other methods. Um, another limitation of this method is if your function has multiple roots, the bisection method only finds one root, right? It's just a perfectly deterministic procedure. You pick your two endpoints, and once you've picked those endpoints, even if there's three roots in between, bisection will only ever converge to the same one of them. Um, so that's it. Thanks very much for listening.